Did you know that lack of sleep can affect your weight? Oh my God. It's one of the many things that sleep can impact. Sleep is everything, mama. It not only affects your energy level, it can affect your skin, your mood, even your hormones. Truthfully, you cannot live your best life without proper sleep. And that's why I, Trixie Mattel, sleep about 16 hours a night. To be honest, like... Well, especially when I'm on tour and I'm treating my body like a machine, sleep is pretty much priority number one. I'm like, if you want me to do anything later for you in a wig, I need about eight to 10 hours in the dark, uninterrupted sleep. Beam's Dream Powder is here to give you your best sleep ever. Dream Powder is a triple lab tested product and contains melatonin, magnesium, reishi, i-theanine, and nano CBD. Now, what is nano CBD? Please, can somebody fill me in? Well, nano CBD is an interesting thing because it's all about surface area. When you break hemp molecules down to tiny droplets, your body has a dramatically increased ability to absorb it, making it super effective. It's also delicious. You can mix it in hot water, but you can also mix it with nut milk, whatever. And it makes only five calories and it's the perfect little nightcap before bed. I keep mine at my condo in Milwaukee because when I'm traveling into town, I usually need to like try to get back on some... You know, it's like a new sleep schedule, new time zone, and it's just really nice for me. It helped me function the next day. It helps me wake up and make the most of my time when I'm home so I can see, oh, see my family. Ugh, who cares? And then see my friends, you know, do my little thing. Good news. If you subscribe now, you get 35% off your first month of Dream. Plus, you get a free mug and a frother. Head to beamorganics.com slash bald. That's B-E-A-M organics.com slash bald, B-A-L-D, for 35% off your first month of a dream subscription. Pause or cancel anytime. There are always times when you're at home and want a cocktail but don't know how to make them or have the ingredients needed. For me, it happens when I have a small group of friends over who are fancy, worldly people, and I have no idea how to make them their Moscow mule or whatever. Introducing Drinkworks Home Bar by Keurig. It has all the answers to your cocktail woes. All you need to do is pick a pot, press start, and enjoy a perfectly crafted cocktail within seconds. It doesn't get much easier than that. With over 40 cocktails from the Elijah Craig Old Fashioned to Jack Daniels Variety Pack to a Margarita, Cosmo, or Moscow Mule, there's something for everyone this holiday season. And just in time for this holiday, Drinkworks has launched the Home Bar Classic, the newest addition to the Home Bar family. This thing is great for entertaining guests and not having to spend the entire night behind the bar. If someone asks for a mojito or a Moscow mule, boom, in just seconds, it's ready. I had some friends over last weekend and it was so easy. They asked for a cocktail. I grabbed the pod, popped it in and pressed start. In seconds, my guests had the perfectly crafted cocktail and the home bar even carbonates the drinks for you. Visit drinkworks.com to see the Home Bar Classic and Home Bar Pro and to see the full selection of cocktails. And remember, please enjoy responsibly. Keurig is a registered trademark of Keurig Green Mountain, Inc., used under license. Okay, so I'm recording. Ready to clap? Okay. One, One two, two, three. Wow. That's it. <laughs> but wow, what a moment. Most pleasing to me in my career. Oh, wait. <laughs> I'm getting text messages on the computer now. Yeah, that, that's oh. not recording that. No, it's not. No. Okay, right. <laughs> We're our own sound text down here at the gig. Listen, some people okay, this is this is a very good example of um two styles of um coping. So during the pandemic, some people learned skills, acquired skills and gained expert expertise in areas. Others refused <laughs> to learn and not only that any existing knowledge they had degraded. That's others, me. Others calcified. It's like the worst parts <laughs> yeah. of yourself, the holes bored deeper. Yeah. Like, I don't know how, I know less about audio than I did before the pandemic, which is not even you went, fathomable. You went complete still Alice during that time. Yeah. I'm like Luddite, Amish, Nell. There was in central Wisconsin, I remember there was Amish people and I... Like, not to be ignorant, when I first saw people going down the side of the street in a wagon with, like, the bonnets on and stuff, I remember being like, is this real? Like, Like, what's their problem? (laughs) Because they're, like, colonial. I'm like, is this a ghostly apparition? Like, (laughs) I understand that the clothing has certain limitations, but the styles are unchanging, which is kind of fascinating. Like, you can't use these fabrics or whatever. You have to make the clothes yourself. But we're not doing halters or, like, you know, like, we're not doing – or, like (laughs) – there's a lot of ways to be modest that aren't like a blouse and a long dress. 
<laughs> You'd rather, but I would give them electricity before halter, <laughs> halters. <laughs> but do they do, do? But I've seen Amish people at the airport. So where do you draw the line? Is um, it is it, think, is, it a, is a flight not a machine? No, if, I think it's just a steel bird. I'm just kidding. I don't know. I don't know. I have no way. Wait, Amish don't go to the airport, do they? Mary, I've seen Amish people at the airport flying on planes. Of course, they just hang onto the wings and go, oh. there's a colonial, a colonial woman on the plane churning yeah. butter. Yeah. Well, we've had opposite weeks. You, yes, we have. You actually yeah. did the gigs that were asked of I, you, which is yeah. very my tea. Very, and I yeah, took and a page I, out of your book, which is fallen, <laughs> I've fallen ill. Yeah. Fallen <laughs> ill and disappeared leave. into the wilderness. <laughs> Oh, I know. It was, um, oh my God. So I'm in Boston now. Wait, I have to tell you though. It's beautiful here. Boston? Fa- fall in New York City. The Big Apple. <laughs> no, in New England. I, I took some pictures on my phone. This is not going to be very interesting to listen to, but I took some pictures on my phone. It, it, stunning. Stunning. What are you going to do with them? I'm going to jerk off to them later. <laughs> The I'm foliage. I know foliage. you love that foliage. <laughs> it was f- picturesque fall foliage, and it was like, oh my god! It was uh it was that thing that you know, uh, New England in the fall is magical. I don't care what anybody says. Don't let people tell appendix. you otherwise, honey. I don't care if you've had your appendix out, you're prolapsed, or you can't. You're blind. New England is beautiful in the fall, and I was glad to be here in a sixty degree day with sun. It was I lovely. believe it. Yeah, I'll show you the pictures later. It'll be riveting. I had to film at the Trixie Motel until the Sunday, and then I had the bright idea to film. I think mm. I filmed Monday and went back to L.A. Had the bright idea f- to pack for all my gigs. Uh, I was supposed to fly to St. Louis first for this college gig, and at the airport on the way to St. Louis, my fucking appendix. I don't know. I don't know how to describe the medical term, but I'm gonna say go off. <laughs> I think burst. She went off like like a, like a Twitter rant, but with pain. It was like, and another thing, bitch. Like, it just compounded. It was the Twitter thread of medical pain. Yeah, it was almost a four-hour endless... flight, and I was stuck in seat 1A, the bulkhead seat, which is the worst oh, seat. Oh, God. So might is as well, it really? I think so. There's nowhere to put anything. Oh, I see. You can't okay. really stretch out your legs because there's a wall. <laughs> you know? So I'm just doubled over in the seat, like, knees uh, to the chest, going, uh, the most pain I've ever felt in my entire, entire, entire life. Really? Entire life. I couldn't even know pain could feel like that. And then we land and I go, oh. I'm just going to go to sleep because maybe it's just upset stomach and I'll get over it. Are you serious? You've done so it- I went to bed and I went to, I slept for 40 minutes and woke up in worse pain. And I was like, we have to go to the hospital. We have to go to the hospital. Oh. We have to go to the hospital. So I had to go to the ER and because of COVID, it was understaffed and not enough beds. I had to That's sit in thing. that waiting room for five and a half hours in extreme pain. Five and a half hours. And guess what the fucking commercial playing on the TV was? What? We have more and more testimonials coming in from people who have turned their lives around by restoring their hair. <laughs> and not just hair restoration, but these bitches were <gasps> shady. There was this one who was like, tired of the constant battle, comb over, expensive hair plugs. Some people have just given up and live bald altogether. Excuse that was the tone. On the, yes, on the, Some people have thrown their hands in the air, given up, and just ex- flung themselves off a bridge. Yes, say something, I'm giving up on you. Like, that is so intense to on a TV. And there's, of course, women crying. And I understand women losing their hair is a different thing. You this is a totally different thing. But these men being like, look it, it's real. You can touch it. It's my hair. It grows. The best part is it's my hair. It's my hair. They kept being like, well, it's my hair. I'm like, yeah, it's your hair. But, like, to make it sound like to to, to not have hair is this, like, some people is have just ripped off all their ghoulish. skin and rolled in salt. <laughs> yeah. Like, what's a ghastly, that? ghoulish affliction for which there is no there is, there is no alternative lifestyle. It is perfectly acceptable to be a bald man. It has been for a long time. Yeah, no one cares. Nobody cares. Nobody fucking cares. And nobody I almost cares felt, like, head. secondhand predatory. Like, I was like, I understand we'll have to make a buck. But making somebody at home, like, at 4 a.m. watching this feel like they should literally kill themselves because they don't have the same head of hair they had at 20 is really a lot. It's it's a lot. It is a lot. That was so wait, a lot, you had to Robin. Wait, you had to wait in the... That's why... See, it's funny. I'm more horrified of going to the hospital than I am about the pain because I know what is the hospital is waiting. Waiting. Not getting, yes. like... I figured, oh, like, they'll... I'll have to wait an hour. 
Oh, it'll no. be like an hour. And, it'll be 90 minutes. Mary, Mary, five and a half hours of me going, oh. Uh, and then I remember I was like, oh. Uh, and they were saying that shit about bald people. And I went, work. Uh. I was just like, uh, kicking me when I'm down. <laughs> kicking me when I'm down. You should have said you had chest pain because I think they immediately see you because they think you're having a heart attack. Well, they're like, what's your pain level? I go, 10. I said, this is the most pain I've ever been in my entire life. I said, I can barely stand. I almost couldn't get in the Uber. I almost called 911. 10. This is the worst, the worst, the worst. So then they get and in there. Like, eh, you're not screaming. You're it's you're at five. Yeah. <laughs> then they put you in the CAT scan machine and they scan you. And you know, I've been sick for like a week and a half. I've been missing other right, gigs right. because of this. Right, right. So then they yeah, scan yeah. me and they go, your appendix is like super uh, swollen. So we can either try to shrink it with antibiotics. But since you've been on antibiotics for five days for your illness, yeah. I think we should just cut it out. And I said, well, what do you do? And they're like, it's a quick procedure. It's with like laparoscopic surgery. And we can do it at 10 o'clock in a few hours. I'm like, I guess let's do that. So then they give me morphine, yeah. which I just want to say does nothing. Wait, 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 wait. You weren't under general anesthesia? Oh, no. They give me morphine in the waiting room. But I'm like, this, Mary, this, oh, this is I nothing. Okay. I was like, yeah, yeah, Judge Judy meme of her like tap, 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 tap. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I can still feel the pain. What are we doing I, here I right still now? know who I am and I know where I am. This yeah. is not working. I yeah. want to wake up in four days with – um. Yeah. Like a With Tijuana skinny, a full head of blonde hair, <laughs> and a full head of long blonde six thirteen synthetic hair. <laughs> Yaki. So then I get Yaki. I get in the room, and then I'm so scared of like general anesthesia is scary. Getting put under is scary. I know it's a, a, a literally a surgery that is nothing. Everybody gets their appendix mm. out, but I was so scared. And of course, they give you the drugs, and they go, "This will take the edge off," which means later you won't even remember being in that room. I don't yes, even remember going right. to surgery. But then it just sucked because I had to miss all of our gigs for the week. I was supposed to DJ a Spotify party. I had to miss my party at my bar. I had to miss our Halloween gigs after putting yeah. all the work into the rehearsals and the costumes. Anyway, it just sucked. And oh, now, that's right. Yes. All of that. You did a lot of rehearsals. Videos, and costumes, shit. rehearsals. Yeah. And now. Motherfucker. It'll take, you know, you have like come and go flu-like symptoms after an appendectomy. So that'll be mm. the next like 10 days at least is just like chills or like diarrhea. Just. So it's so fun and cool. So now for the Trixie Motel, which we're filming this week, I have to do like caftans and stuff because I can't even do like compression wear. Because look, you at should me. work into a diarrhea storyline. Ooh. I'll say this though. I'll say this. Do you want to skinny? There's something they don't tell you about getting really sick. <laughs> you do lose weight, and you lose it quick. I'm not recommending you get sick. I'm recommending – because I finished I, – so I'm two weeks out from the marathon. So I was supposed to be two weeks out and now this happened. So I was already really thin from <sighs> running and then this yeah. happened and I saw a picture of myself in this hospital and I was like, bitch. <laughs> Honestly, it worked. Like get on a red carpet <laughs> now, bitch. <laughs> Let them have it. I look like fucking elf on a shelf. Bald elf on a shelf. Throw a gown on that fucking dying woman and get her in front of the cameras. Get she a is, bolt of fabric down here snatched. immediately. <laughs> there is so much more to nutrition than calories. Your diet plays a huge role in your microbiome, which in turn impacts your medical, your mental, your physical well-being, everything. Everything's related. The science is clear, okay? A healthy gut microbiome with the good bacteria that helps our bodies process food is key to a healthy lifestyle. And let me tell you, as somebody who just had their appendix ripped out savagely by a doctor, um, having good gut health is something that you definitely take for granted until one day not everything is going great. So now we're learning about the connection between your gut microbiome health and type 2 diabetes. Pendulum Glucose Control is the first and only medical probiotic that's designed to manage A1C and blood glucose levels through the health of your microbiome. This is really interesting to me because I'm Native American and Native American people, I think, get diabetes three times as often as like a fully Caucasian person. So like my grandma had diabetes, my mom has diabetes, um, women in my family usually get gestational diabetes. So diabetes is definitely something we talk about a lot and, and we look out for a lot. Over time, people with type 2 diabetes lose the gut bacteria that helps digest fiber and manage our blood glucose levels. And for those with type 2 diabetes, diet and exercise alone are often not enough to manage it. The best approach emphasizes diet, exercise, and a healthy gut microbiome. This connection has been widely recognized by leading scientists studying diabetes, including the American Diabetes Association, Mayo Clinic, John Hopkins, etc. So why pendulum, right? With pendulum, you can feel in control of your levels, not the other way around. Pendulum glucose control 
fills in the gaps by providing the first and only probiotic designed to manage blood glucose and A1C levels. Take control of your glucose levels today. Try Pendulum Glucose Control for 90 days, and if you're not satisfied with your levels, get your money back. Visit PendulumLife.com and find out more. Use the code BALD for 20% off your first bottle of membership. That's P-E-N-D-U-L-U-M-L-I-F-E, PendulumLife.com, promo code BALD. Hi, I'm not a therapist, actually. I'm not a therapist, but I want to ask you, what interferes with your happiness? Is something preventing you from achieving your goals? I know for me, when I wake up in the morning and I can't get that perfect cup of tea in the morning, it really drives me down a whimmy. BetterHelp will help assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can connect in a safe environment. It is so convenient to do it online. Girl, I don't drive. So being able to go get help somewhere without having to actually leave the house, it's fabulous. Not to mention, I have friends who um, have seen a lot of therapists in their lives um, and plenty of friends who should. But sometimes like your insurance only supports a therapist that's like 40 minutes into the suburbs. And then you're like, really? I have to spend a half day getting out to some – like it's just not always convenient. You can start communicating in 48 hours. It is not a crisis line. It is self-help. The service is available for clients worldwide, and the licensed professional counselors specialize in all kinds of things, family conflicts, anxiety, trauma, anger, self-esteem, and my favorite, LGBT issues. Believe it or not, being queer adds a whole lot of drama. And in some places, you might not even have a licensed therapist that is like queer friendly. Let's say you live in Back Swamp, Missouri, and you're like, how am I supposed to talk about my gayness, you know? And be private about it. Everything you share is confidential. It's convenient, professional, affordable. And so many people have been using BetterHelp that they're recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. I want you to start having a happier life today. As a listener, you get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor at betterhelp.com slash bald. Join over 1 million people who've been taking charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash bald. But I want to know. So anyway, that's my tea. I'll be sick for another week. And you know that I love, um, if I'm even inconvenienced, I talk about for five years. So I bet we will be hearing about my health <laughs> journey for about six months. No, I think it's great. I, I'm just really interested in the fact that it took like, um, it took a medical emergency to, you know, but you had been, you'd really been sick for. Yeah, I, People think I missed uh, Netflix because weeks. of my appendectomy. I was sick. You were sick. You were actually yeah. sick. Yeah. And then the Trixie yeah. Motel, I've just been dead on my feet because I was sick. But with all these contractors and renovators, I can't cancel. Like, no. You know, celebrity guests and stuff who are coming in from LA. Yeah. I'm like, I can't just, sorry, bye. But don't you think it, a diarrhea storyline or like a fainting moment would be like really hot for TV? My drag name is Diarrhea Storyline. <laughs> um. So what happened at the gig? You had Saturday the Boulet Brothers Ball. Uh, yeah, that was well. They were so. Ugh. They were so, horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, but I wanted to say it. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it is so, okay. I feel I want to say this. I am so grateful because, especially that Boston gig, we've done it. We've done it a million times. You feel like Beyonce. The crowd is so amazing. I don't personally understand how anybody could be in that place it is so crowded it is so hot it is so packed it is so like sardines it's like i it, it's the only place i can be in that environment is on the stage so thank god i get to do that but it is mary it was um it was lit what was not lit at all nothing not the opposite of lit was going from the stage to the dressing room soaked in sweat to home to the airport and to do it all again. It is club, another club. Another. You know what? I love both it those gigs. Because this is your first year doing LA. I've never done the back-to-back and yeah. I don't think I could ever do it again. I do it every year, except obviously how COVID. Do you, and how this. do you do it? Well, how, did you, how do you do it's it? Just, you just have to do, you do your shit until, you lip sync at the boulet ball until like, what, two? Literally two. And then your option is to either... Fuck around at the venue and go straight to the airport huh. no, or no, like no. go There's home no and shower. Around. There's no fucking around. Yeah. Oh, so you like go home and shower what? and then, yeah. Or what? 
there was I was like there is there's only they, going home and showering. If I had to go to the airport after the state I was in, would it Mary, have been like Charlie Brown, like pigsty, like a cloud? Imagine that, but like aged two hundred oh. years. Like because I wore, I chose to wear the. I I work smart, you know. So I say to myself, okay, you sweat a lot. It's a packed gig. There's no AC. Why don't you wear a rubber suit? What were you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> nothing smart no smart thoughts but here's the thing i got fixated i got fixated so much on this tiny detail under boob okay <laughs> for a venue that had thousands of people standing drunk with a smoke no, machine but, yeah yeah but i'm telling you i loved it it just it looked it was so great i had under boob and i wore uh flare jeans yeah and i looked like a farm girl and it was absolutely not worth it. It was not scary. It was not Halloweeny. It made no sense. But, um, it was so hot and ridiculous and stupid. But it was fun. A farm girl. And then, um, yeah, it was like um, Lana Del Rey. There's a part in Clueless where the teacher goes, "You can hit a few be balls a in, those in those clothes." Yeah, she exactly could be a that energy. In those clothes. That was you. It was very that. It was but, very but that. But don't you love that venue? Because they put so much production into the Halloween ball. You really feel like a star because you're like, whoa, these massive screens and light yes. show. And yes. The DJ yeah. decks even look like Avengers. Yeah. It's crazy. It's awesome. And Mateo was there, which is always lovely. Yeah. Um, and Mama, downtown, downtown was lit. I, it, the After the show, when I was waiting for, like for um, just to get out of there, people were fucking crazy. This girl on the phone was like... Um, it was like comedy because people were angry and upset, but they were dressed like stupid, you know, characters. Like um, one girl was like um, like a Peanuts, a, a black girl was like a Peanuts character. I forget which, like Charlie Brown, whatever. And she was like, you fat motherfucking bitch, you fat, ugly ass bitch. You, and, and just screaming on the phone. And <gasps> Very it was like, like this message is for Rachel. Yes. <laughs> Why you took me off the motherfucking schedule. And but in like um, dressed as like um, Snoopy or something, it's so funny. And then on the drive home, we would look at a bus stop, and there'd be one person just like with this crazy. I was just so magical. I love that. And then um, so I then had you went the, home and showered. Went home, showered, um, repacked. Was here's the thing though: you have to lay the shit out that's soaked in sweat. You got two hours. Yeah, you don't taste you don't that. that? <laughs> yeah. You don't taste that's that shit sweet. in your mouth. Because I had, to, I was like, oh, I didn't think this through. I have to wear the same thing. A smart person would have been like, well, first of all, no rubber suit. But then at least if you're going to insist on the rubber suit, you'd be like maybe a change of clothes so you don't pack fucking moldy uh, So whatever. I'm not just lock it, locked and loaded with a yeast yeah. infection? Hello. But so um, go to the airport and I had, I had a very strange experience. What is it? I had the most delicious breakfast I've ever had in my entire life. <laughs> At the airport? I mean, sorry, on the airplane. Oh, on the pl- uh, JetBlue? On the airplane. JetBlue. Did they turn it? They turned it so hard in a breakfast way. I I, I can't. Is it flat down seats? Eden, flat down seats? Flat down seats. Uh-huh. Mama, I had the, I had the breakfast. I, if I could eat this breakfast for the rest of my life, I would say, yes, God, please, every day. Yeah. Please. And then I slept five hours of like lovely, gorgeous, like uninterrupted sleep. So that helped a lot. But this breakfast, I want to shove it on my ass. Yeah. And I've, I've never felt that way about any food product ever really, you know. Yeah. But um, I, it, it was great. I My appetite has been gone for like t- 10 days and it still hasn't really come back. So I, I'm, I'm taking a page out of you your eating? book. I'm taking a page out of your book. I'm doing like Soylent. a juice Soylent. or a juicer and a shirt. And then no, I'll have like Soylent. in the evening, I'll have like one real meal. Like one day in Milwaukee, I had Jimmy John's. One day I had noodles and company. Like it's coming yeah. and going. But um, honestly, I don't want my appetite to come back the way – my human appetite was already too much. I'm yeah. ready to just be hungry three, three times a day. Yeah, or like I love a breakfast, a, I fucking hate lunch, and then a nice dinner. But that's where Soylent comes in. Mm-hmm. It's people. <laughs> so then it's Soylent in short, like snatches in Shore's wig. Did you get? Did you um, in Boston? Did you get to see any of the kids, the children, people you know? Yes, it was lovely. I saw um, Layla. Your family doesn't come, do they? 
to your sh- like no. those big shows or anything? Nobody's no, 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 no. Oh, my God, no. But Layla's parents were at the show in the dressing room. Layla McQueen. And I was like, Layla McQueen. Um, her parents, and so I would like, go back into the dressing room. It's like pretty, cha- like pretty chaotic. And I noticed these two old people who were like wearing wigs and being weird. And I'm like, who the fuck are these old people? And just like, like an hour passes, and I'm like getting annoyed. And then Layla's like, oh, by the way, these are my parents. I was like. Okay, that makes a lot more sense because it felt like two, like, not homeless, but just random people wandered into the dressing room and decided to stay there all night long. It was so weird, but they were so sweet. And um, it was Bob, it was Layla Bob, um, oh, Jay Jolie, um, Sonique. Does Bob, looking, L- Layla was in the show? Yeah. A work? Yeah. Fina. It was like a huge, I mean, the show was crazy. It was Bo- so the fun. The Boulets, who we vocalize that we hate. The Boulette Brothers. We should yeah. start a beef. Um, well, I think I started it because I just, um, they, the toilets on the second floor weren't working, so I would just shit in my hand. And then their costumes were always like around, so I just put the shit in their wigs. Yeah. I'm going to start so. a beef right now. Um, Boulets, uh, it's November yeah. 1st. Have an uh, uh, annual forecast is 364 more days of irrelevance. Burn, honey, burn. Burn, you know what? Burn, sweetie, burn. Halloween is once a year, but a gym flow, a work hustle, a workflow gym hustle. <laughs> what do you know about The grind heaven? never stops. The, the grind, grind never, never stops. <laughs> I flew out of that operating room into a split. <laughs> are we are we still beefing with the boulets or has this, tr- is this on oh, to something else? <laughs> this has turned on to something else. Okay. okay, I'm back. Okay. Sorry. I do I do love um Bob asked it she was like, I have a joke about the Belay brothers, but I don't know if they have a, um I don't know what their sense of humor is like. And I was like, Don't do it. <laughs> I think they have a good sense of humor. Um They do. They're they're they are great people, but this is my Boulet's joke because everybody's always unsure about which one is named which one. And I think saying the big uh, boulet and the little boulet is a little crazy. No. People say the big boulet and the little boulet, and I'm like they have it's autonomy. It's like the Big Dipper and the Little Dipper. Yeah, I guess that's true. But I always remember it. The the, the tall the tall ones drag Morda because the other one can fit Swan through the other one's legs. That is fucking that's hysterical. That's how I remember it. That is so funny. The swan through the other one's legs. That is... That, that and makes, every time I'm I meet a, them, I have to go, okay, no, no, no. Like, it's like a nursery rhyme, like April, you're, you're, June, and November. Hey, okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. It's very yeah. that to Actually, I will never forget... That is a really good device to remember Swanthula, that. Swanthula, other one's legs. Swanthula. Hi, it's Trixie Mattel, and I am a bald. And I'm a bald by choice. I think that we should have a lot of choices of what we're going to do with our hair. You know what I mean? Like, if you want to grow your hair and have it through your life, that should be an option. Holding on to your hair, keeping it healthy, keeping it from falling out, if that is important to you, there should be options on the table. Keeps offers a simple, stress-free way to keep your hair. Convenient virtual doctor consultations medications delivered straight to your door every three months. You don't even have to leave your home, mama. It's low cost. Treatments start at just $10 per month and Keeps offers generic versions. Discreet packaging and proven results. Keeps has more five-star reviews than any of its competitors. Remember, prevention is key. Treatments can take four to six months to see results, so the sooner you start, the better. Everybody knows it's easier to keep hair than to try to grow it back once you've lost it. So Keeps is a great way to get into that. I have a friend who, I won't say who it is, but let's just say if you are a snoop in people's bathrooms, you find that a lot of people are trying to hold on to their hair. And I have a friend who uses keeps and I would have never known this person has stunning, beautiful hair. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash bald to receive the first month of treatment for free. That's K E E P S.com slash bald to get your first month free. K E E P S.com slash bald. Hi, cold weather means it's time for hot drinks. Now, I'm not a coffee drinker, but let me get one thing straight. I drink a lot of hot drinks. Just ask my bottom teeth, which are real, which get discolored at a different rate than my top teeth, which are veneers. And you will know that I drink hot black tea all the time, and I have to get my bottom teeth basically pressure washed off at a car dealership so that they match the top teeth. Are you sick of making cups of coffee in the morning and having it get cold before you get it? Okay. I got to tell you guys, this happens to me a lot. 
I make the drink. I pour the hot water in, right? I make the tea. I make tea. Tea bag, hot water, lovely. It's too hot to drink, so I set it down. I go do something else. I forget about the tea, and I come back like an hour later, and I'm just drinking a cold drink. I do this all the time. I don't know why it is so easy for me to just walk away and forget about a drink, but that's who I am. Are you sick of making a cup of coffee in the morning and having it get cold before you have a chance to drink it? Yes, I am. Or reheating the same cup in the microwave multiple times until the flavor is just unrecognizable? Ember is a smart mug that is going to save your morning routine. Ember is the world's first temperature-controlled mug that keeps your coffee or tea hot to the last sip. You guys, this is crazy. You set your preferred drinking temperature with the app on your phone, and your Ember mug just keeps the drink at one temperature. Isn't that crazy? Ensuring a perfect, delicious sip each time. You know, a lot of the drinks I make that are hot just come from like a packet. It's not fancy. And if it's not temperature controlled, it's gross. It has to be the right temperature to be good. Ember has a long lasting built in battery so you can sip your coffee in any room of the house or on the go without it getting cold. When you're ready to recharge, place it on the charging coaster. Ember is unlike any other products on the market that keep your beverage hot, and most of the time, too hot. Ember offers precision temperature control. I like that you can say, no, 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 this needs to be 90 degrees, not 100, not 70. It needs to be 90, exactly 90. Can we please have some kind of control in our lives? Like the whole world could fall apart, but can I just have my drink the right temperature? Ember is one of the must-have gifts for the holiday season for every coffee and tea drinker on your list. That is a fierce gift. Head to ember.com slash bald for 10% off your first-time purchasers. Order early for holiday delivery. Ember.com slash bald for 10% off your first-time purchasers. Don't get me one. I already have one, but that is a fabulous gift. You know what? This has given me some revisionist history on my forecast for Halloween in general. I'm cool mean? for the summer to do like two days. What? You what? We said like I was if I was healthy, I was supposed to do what five days in a row. We don't need to be doing all that. We don't need to be okay, doing but, all that. Yeah, regardless of appendicitis and gout and cholera and all whatever else you have, like that's not it. We don't need that's to be doing it. all that. That's not it. Well, I don't think like the um I don't think the flying overnight to Oh, and all the the bags were late. Yeah. So like there was a <gasps> real delay. So when we got here, we had to wait, probably wait an hour for the bags, which it was very precious time lost. So it's just, I'm not trying to do all that. I'm not either. But it's, it's uh, I mean. Also, I'm trying to do like two one, gigs and like one number at each. And that is it. Yeah. 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 I mean, th- that being said, the Boston crowd is just so fucking incredible. It like once I was on stage, I was like, okay, uh, you know, it was so, 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 so. I'm fun, just happy but... people still came when they found out I was going to be not gone. <laughs> they still came. Oh my In God. La- you know, who, we booked at This Is It because I was dead, dead to the world. We last who? minute booked Saint from Dragula and Sigourney Beaver. Oh, Sigourney Beaver. Whose okay. waist is, I'm not kidding. A wristwatch. Her belt is like a wristwatch, and her giant, giant breasts and giant, giant hips and ass. It just—it's a two-hour glass. It's fucking amazing. I have amazing. to look it up. I gotta look her up. Apparently, they said uh, season four of Dragula is lit, crunk, and turned. I only saw the first episode, but it really was. They really, they bugs? you guys really brought it. Do they really get scary? They get like scary. Do they drink blood and like eat, throw bricks at each other? Yes, I. I'm judging. I think. I think I'm this week. I'm a You're judge. On it? I'm a judge. On Dracula? Yeah, on Dracula. <laughs> I'm a what, judge on what Dracula. What exactly are you judging? Well, I can't say. Oh, I see. But actually, I see, I see, this see. might come out. I don't know. Watch it. Let's just say, me. I think they announced me and Orville Peck are the judges this week. So it may or may not be like what? a Western vibe. Oh, so it's like, what's it, a rap challenge? These bitches are really, those Dracula bitches are on another level. Uh, oh, no. It's not even, it's not even like. And they make a lot of it. I know it, the level of creativity is is nowhere near, like it, it's just way beyond drag race. Let's just say it's also crazy because drag is an alternative art form allegedly, mm-hmm. and then this is alternative <laughs> drag within an alternative it's a art subculture. form. Subculture. It's a, yeah, an alternative sect of a subculture of a whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. like to be spooky. I never have an inclination to be scary. I just want to see them eat bugs. I like it when they eat bugs. Bitch, they tattoo them. They really go off. They, I mean, I, listen, I don't want whatever they're, whatever the award is. You're not putting me in the ground with bugs in a coffin. No, what's the prize? Although it, the, I bet it's probably comparable to Drag Race. It's $100,000. Are you fucking serious? All yeah. right, yeah. Tattoo I mean, I get me. it. I get it. Mm-hmm. I get, listen, yeah. I get uh. it. 
And now that we I'm a professional it. drag show judge. Oh, that's right. The cat's out of the bag. And the also, a- we now know the news. The last time I was healthy, London. Um, <laughs> yes, I, I'm judging Queen of the Universe. Queen, Queen of the, un- of the uh, Universe. Alongside my colleagues, um, Leona Vanessa Lewis. Vanessa Williams. Vanessa Williams. And Michelle. Michelle Rodriguez. Michelle. Yeah. Michelle Visaje. Michel Bizarre. You know what that show made me think of, though? I can't say anything, but it did make me think of how blithely unaware I am of drag in other countries in general. I just think of drag as like an American art form. I know that that's probably wrong, but the, yeah. my references well, I mean, for drag are American drag queen. So I forget about like a sure. drag queen in, I don't know. Peru. Yeah. I never, never think yeah. about it. And then you don't China. think about like the cultural differences. Like we talk about the difference between like LA and New York queens. But it's that times mm-hmm. a million when it's like another country. Yeah. Do you remember? Have you seen that video? Um, it was like a, a viral video of a of a. Uh, I believe she was a Thai drag queen who did a a really spooky performance to "I Will Always Love You," <gasps> with an with the with the hair that came yes, down. Yes. This and one. That, this yeah. one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. That's that's what that's whenever I think of drag that's not American. That's what I hope for. Anyways. That's what your point of reference is. <laughs> Yes, I just love that so much. I think oh of, um, yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty up there. You know, who I messaged. Uh, this yeah. is. It was Halloween, and I messaged Eva Destruction because are you aware of that iconic Eva Destruction number, the laughing track? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, you know, she invented like that clown look to that number, and you know, really? every drag. Yeah, she was the first person to do that. Oh, she was the first person. But, okay, but like it, it for some reason that number translates and speaks to everyone so drag queens everywhere will do a clown look and do the laughing yeah. track and like whatever huh. no one owns songs i hate it even on right. local level how it's like that's her song like you, whatever right. unless britney spears is here doing it it's not her song right 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 um but i messaged even was like how do you feel on halloween every year when you see literally your number you invented just being done everywhere you know what she say? What'd she say? She just was like, it's just, she was just like, it's crazy. I mean, I can't really feel any way about it because I, it's constantly being done. So that is weird. Yeah. It's like, um, I suppose it's, what would be the equivalent? It's like, I, I don't even know what the equivalent is. I, mm. The other like drag songs that everyone does would be like the get on up. But like, that's not even like unique but, POV. But it, <sighs> it's just a song. Yeah. It's just a song. Yeah. But like it's a, it's a, you know, like if you saw someone it, doing, I don't know the log well, lady. I knock on wood. What would no, you say? So I did. So I I saw somebody doing a mix that I like. Like, um, like copied it from I the saw, internet, or it stole the file. Um, probably copied it from the internet. Like or, I like a spoken word mix into like the exact thing. It was like a spoken word part into a thing, and then to another song, and then it just did the whole put it together like that. And I was like, and I was in the audience, and I was like. And I'd been performing that for like five years. Yeah, it was so strange. It was like you're like, what are you, what are you doing? And also, there was a song in Russian. Work. <laughs> so it's like, you, you know what happened to me once, and this is horrible because I don't even remember the girl's name. One time, I was touring clubs in the UK like five years ago, and apparently, this girl mm-hmm. opened for me and did that number. That's like, um, first eyed did it. I can't do it alone from Chicago. Yeah, and she mm-hmm. would put in like, um, I think I don't know what she did, but she would put in like the Macarena or iconic dances yeah 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 and i she op- I, she opened for me and did that i didn't know that i thought i thought of some a brilliant original material so then when i toured the uk like two years later and did that as an opening number people were like did this rich oh. famous drag queen really lift a number from her opener and then tour it in her country two years later and i felt so bad because i ch- i, I would have by the way if i thought somebody had done that of course i would have never done it right and i right, especially right. wouldn't do it in their country after they toured what- with me but like, I had no who, idea. Who do you think you're fooling? Like, who would you? Who are you fooling? Yeah, That's I felt so bad. But I, I had no idea, and I was just like, especially on a local level, like a local drag queen is the last person you should steal anything from. So even if it's accident, accidental, I was like, I feel so shitty. But, right, right. If you're going to steal it from her, you're gonna you should buy it from her. <laughs> yeah. Versus <laughs> you know? like someone stealing one of your numbers, it's like, what's well, homage then? Yeah, because you're like kind of known. Well, I don't want to say known. <laughs> people watch out for you yeah they bitches be, be, you know bitches well, beware no bitches actually beware yeah well speaking of that i was hoping to um i was really hoping to go put my you know what in 
something else in the drag <gasps> this weekend and it did not marry nothing of the sort. It did not occur of the sort. It did not occur. Nothing of that nature even remotely occurred. It was nothing going on. It, there's, there's none of that. Like, I don't know. It's all online, I guess, which it, it always has, but at least before there was Jacques. So we, we go over to Jacques after the show. Well, isn't it grinder now? I mean, that's where the people are meeting up with the girls. Nobody's I wearing Craigslist. So. Nobody's doing that. Well, because, Right, because it's they don't do it anymore. Casual encounters doesn't exist anymore, I guess. But so he went over to Jacques to just do a little tiptoe, little tiptoe, tiptoe, just dead. You went and just dragged dead. to Jacques. Yeah, because the show ended at like ten. We show ended at ten o'clock. Work. So we just tiptoed over. I got in the dumpster. Um, I got in the dumpster. Same, same lovely smell, and um, it was just it was so disappointing. There was not one man in there given me like a sideways glance or like a shifty like it was very sad did you go up very, to the, your sad. apartment and knock on the door no let me I, in because i yeah let me let me in i usually do the bathroom I no because they here. kicked out the person they kicked it, it's a whole there's a drama drama they're turning him into like you know crazy condos because that the rents in that fucking neighborhood bitch out of control I was talking to a bartender in Milwaukee and they were like, Halloween this weekend was so crazy. They were like, this one patron was drunk and belligerent and knocked off my glasses. And he said, I had to Spartan kick them out the door. And I said, what is a Spartan <laughs> kick? He said, when your foot, it lands flat on their chest and they fly backwards. And I said, oh, like from 300. I said, why did you do that? He goes, because he knocked my glasses off. I said, then how do you know it was them? Blind as a bat, just kicking someone in the chest, like kicking serves willy you. Willy. Probably an old woman who's like, can I use the restroom? <laughs> Boom. <laughs> we talked about um, Eden um, should get a um, a uh, rage problem. So like, uh, instead of being helpful and doing assistant duties, she's just beating the shit out of people. <laughs> she flies off the handle. <laughs> flies off the handle at, for no reason. I was like, where's your assistant? I thought she should be helping you pack up. Oh, she's upstairs beating the shit out of the bartender. <laughs> the first thing she does at the gig is wrap her fist like Fight Club. <laughs> yes. Yes. And that's like, before you know it, it's just a UFC like tournament <laughs> instead of a show. <laughs> I thought that'd be great. Well, I oh think we God. should tell people that even though we just told them oh, that we were going to quit back. the bald and the beautiful. We, yeah, we're back. We're back for, qu- for quarter four. We'll be back through the holidays. Through the holidays, we're going to finish out the year. Um, maybe video, maybe not. Maybe video, maybe it's, not. We're, we're really busy we'll right now, and we're not even together yeah. that much. So it no. is a podcast. But thank yeah. you all. I don't know if you clocked all the messages and stuff. People I being did. like, I love this I pod. Went through, um, I went through the last the, the YouTube video for the last episode, and I read almost every single comment. And it was like overwhelmingly, no, don't do it. So, okay, I, I, I won't jump. Yeah. We're not going to jump. No, they were saying, no, for don't now. do the pod. <laughs> don't if you're and thinking about coming jump. back do don't jump. do it <laughs> don't do it but do jump off the video okay <laughs> so, All right, well, so this was a short one now. today because Katya's going to the airport but I hope yeah. you'll stay with us for the next few weeks for the bald and the beautiful yes thank you so much and shine on everyone shine on <laughs> bye bye <laughs> There are always times when you're at home and want a cocktail but don't know how to make them or have the ingredients needed. For me, it happens when I have a small group of friends over who are fancy, worldly people, and I have no idea how to make them their Moscow mule or whatever. Introducing Drinkworks Home Bar by Keurig. It has all the answers to your cocktail woes. All you need to do is pick a pot, press start, and enjoy a perfectly crafted cocktail within seconds. It doesn't get much easier than that. With over 40 cocktails from the Elijah Craig Old Fashioned to Jack Daniels Variety Pack to a Margarita, Cosmo, or Moscow Mule, there's something for everyone this holiday season. And just in time for this holiday, Drinkworks has launched the Home Bar Classic, the newest addition to the Home Bar family. This thing is great for entertaining guests and not having to spend the entire night behind the bar. If someone asks for a mojito or a Moscow Mule, boom, in just seconds, it's ready. I had some friends over last weekend and it was so easy. They asked for a cocktail. I grabbed the pod, popped it in and pressed start. In seconds, my guests had the perfectly crafted cocktail and the home bar even carbonates the drinks for you. Visit drinkworks.com to see the home bar classic and home bar pro and to see the full selection of cocktails. And remember, please enjoy responsibly. 
Keurig is a registered trademark of Keurig Green Mountain, Inc., used under license.